Hello again everyone. In this video I'll go over the functions and what I believe to be special features of the DT4261. I will only briefly touch on its wireless functionality as I have already dedicated two separate videos on them which I linked below. One of them is the Bluetooth electrical measurement app called Genect Cross, while the other is the MSXL direct input function, also a wireless application. This is the main unit itself. It came in this retail box, which looks really good and professional. Hyogi packaged their products in a good sturdy box with very detailed information and the actual photo of the device. At the back we can find an abbreviated list of its specifications. At the front, the main features or the value propositions of the product. Also included is a pair of their new test leads called L9300 and three AA alkaline batteries which I have already installed. These are the optional accessories which can be bought separately. Inside the retail box we also find an English user's manual which is very well illustrated and also very clear. The uh, precautions uh, document and a guide on how to use the L9300 with sliding finger guard. This is the Z3210 wireless adapter uh, blister pack. I have also already installed it inside the meter. The item here is just the protective rubber cap for the slot of the Z3210 inside the uh, digital multimeter. Hioki released the 4261 in the second half of 2021, so this is really a new digital multimeter in the market, while the Z3210 sometime in 2020, so it is new as well. The DT4261 can be used in any situation that calls for a digital multimeter, but in my subjective estimation, its special features seem to be aimed for use in production environments and other professional applications. Let's see if it lives up to its billing. A quick look at the physical body of the multimeter itself. At the front we have the three input terminals with shutter mechanism at the bottom. The function selector, the operational buttons, and the large LCD screen equipped with three lines and a backlight. At the back we have the tilt stand. The tilt stand also contains various information on several power-up options. I don't know if you can see it. These are the various power-up options and also some information about the device itself. It has the slots for the optional magnetic hanger, the PC connection ports, test lead holders, drain holes at the bottom in case of water ingress, also a provision for hand strap, protective rubber cladding all around. We can also see the locks of the uh, battery cover which does not really require a screwdriver. A coin will open and close these locks. To unlock these plastic uh, turn locks, for lack of a better word, I'll just call these plastic turn locks. Insert a coin and turn it 180 degrees counterclockwise. Opening the back cover, We have the three AA batteries, the 11 amperes fast acting fuse, and the Z3210 wireless adapter already installed. The fast blow type protective fuse is rated at 11 amperes, 1000 volts AC DC, 50 kilo amperes AC interrupting capacity, and 30 kilo amperes interrupting capacity DC. To lock the battery cover again, 
simply insert the coin and turn it 180 degrees clockwise. For this review of the GT4261, let me step off the beaten path and start not with the functional test but with a list of things that makes the DT4261 unique. I'll still do the functional test but at the second half of the video. For those who prefer to look at the functional testing straight away, feel free to skip this and jump ahead using the chapters below. There is an expression which says that if you see one, you have seen them all. What I mean by this is that if you just want to measure voltage, uh, resistance, capacitance, diode or continuity, there's a ton of digital multimeters out there. But there are also stuff that makes the DT4261 stand out. Number 1. Wireless Capability The 4261 can function as a Bluetooth wireless multimeter when paired with an app and a Z3210 wireless adapter. One of these wireless softwares is the capability to transfer measurement data directly to a spreadsheet program like Microsoft Excel. The other through an app called Genect Cross, where much more electrical measurements can be processed, saved, and made into a report quickly for sharing to customers or to your colleagues. Wireless capability seems to me to be a big deal among manufacturers, since Yoki isn't the only one making wireless multimeters these days. I've dedicated two separate videos just on this wireless capability. I've linked them below, so please watch them also for more details on them. Number 2. The included test leads called L9300 is the first Hioki test leads to feature a sliding finger guard as far as I know. At 115 millimeters long, they are a flexible non-tangle variety rated at 1000 volts AC and 1200 volts DC, 80 degrees Celsius, 10 amperes. But what's special about them is that the sliding finger guard does the work of the usual tip covers, except that they don't get lost. For example, in this position, more of the metal is exposed. And the category for this particular position of the finger guard is category 2 1000 volts. To cover up the metal, simply twist the finger guard to the right, slide it up, twist it to the left to lock it. We have now a higher category rating of 600 volts category 4 and 1000 volts category 3. There is the unmistakable Hioki branding on this L9300 test leads. To expose more of the metal again, simply unlock it by twisting it to the right, slide it down, twist to the left. Notice also that the metal is gold-plated. I think that these uh, new test leads are really useful and if this is available in your market region and you think that the price is reasonable, I suggest getting one as a backup or maybe even your main uh, test leads. The DT4261 unit itself sits flush on its back or on its front, so it doesn't drag back and forth. Maybe it's just a small thing, but it's still a good detail, just the same. And when the test leads are settled home in their keeper, they also sit flush when the instrument is on its back. Number 4. The DT4261 has some environmental protection. It is rated IP50 when in use and IP54 when in st storage. It, it also has a drop-proof functionality of 1 meter on concrete. Looking at the battery cover, we can see the rubber gasket, this white one here, which provides a seal against water. There are also water drain holes at the bottom, and the sides, bottom, of the unit itself are wrapped in a good amount of non-removable rubber cladding. For me, this IP rating and drop-proof rating means that 
it has some uh, environmental protection, but that it is not indestructible. You cannot submerge this in water, for example, and dropping it face first can still damage or break the glass if it hits a solid hard object of just the right shape. But still this rating means that the instrument is rugged enough for continuous use in the field. Number 5. Here's a feature that I really liked about the 4261. For me it has the best backlight control I have seen in any multimeter. For one it has a dedicated backlight button. It's not shared with any other function. The backlight is timed to remain lit for 40 seconds and will turn off after that. But it's a small matter to tap this button and turn on the backlight. Second, the backlight's 40 second timer is kind of interactive. Only when the device sits idle for 40 seconds will the backlight turn off. But within at 40 seconds, if you turn the selector or move your test leads to another test point, the timer will reset, giving you another 40 seconds of light. If that is not enough, simply use this power-up option for total control of backlight. From off position, press and hold the backlight button and turn on the selector. BLA off means that the backlight's timer is turned off. So now you can manually turn on the light when you want it and it will stay on until you press the backlight button again. When you turn off the function selector, that setting is saved. So the next time you turn on the selector, your backlight is still in manual control. If you need the timer back, simply repeat this power option, press and hold the backlight button and turn on the selector. BLA on means that the backlight's 40 second timer is on again. Number 6. The large LCD screen provides a good deal of information. You have voltage, frequency and bar graph at the same time, for example. The characters are bold and clear. There's uniform backlighting on the screen which really helps in dim locations. When the measured value ex exceeds a certain setting, the screen turns red as a warning. It will also turn red when the fuse is blown or when the fuse is not installed. Number 7. The input terminals are equipped with safety shutters. They help in preventing accidental short circuits in voltage and current measurements by preventing the user from inserting the test leads in the wrong input terminals. For voltage, resistance, continuity, capacitance, and the optional uh, current lamp accessory, only the common or the COM terminal and the V terminals are open while the current terminal is closed. In the current measurement functions, the A terminal or the current terminal and the COM terminals are opened while the V terminal is closed. Suppose after current measurement function, you want to turn the selector to any other position. You cannot move the selector. The mechanical, uh, the mechanical shutters prevent you from moving the selector to any other position from the current measurement function unless you remove first the test leads. Only then can you move the selector. Likewise, in the voltage, resistance or capacitance functions, if you want to move to the current measurement function, we cannot also move the selector. It's because the shutter mechanism is preventing the selector to be moved. In order to measure current, we must first remove the test leads and turn the selector to the current measurement function and then only can we insert the test leads in the correct input terminals? So this mechanical shutters is really a good way to prevent the user from inserting the test leads in the wrong input terminals for a given measurement function. Having said that, the terminal shutters will still not prevent a serious 
user error. This is an illustration on how to use the current measurement function with the digital multimeter 4261. You break the circuit to be measured and you insert the test leads in series with the load. The user can still make the mistake of directly connecting the test leads across the directly across the full voltage source. A short circuit can still occur and the fuse of the multimeter will blow to protect itself and the operator. That's already a user error and there's not much the mechanical shutters can do about it. It happens to us once in a while, even the best of us. So what we can do is just replace the fuse of the multimeter with the correct uh, fuse rating and be more careful next time. The most common use of the digital multimeter is the measurement of voltage. In this aspect, I think that Hioki DT4261 shines. The first function in this selector is auto volt. From off position, auto volt first. This makes sense. Some people want DC voltage first, some others want AC first. Auto volt takes care of that. Just place it in auto volt and the instrument will make the judgment of, what, of whether or not the voltage test point is AC or DC. What if you want a dedicated DC voltage function? That's easy. Just press this function button and you have a dedicated DC voltage measurement. Tap the blue button again and it will toggle to composite AC and DC voltage, then back to auto volt. DC voltage measurement has a published range between 600 millivolts to 1000 volts with an accuracy of 0.15% and an input impedance of around 11 mega ohms. One of these button cell batteries is already spent. I'll find out which one. Three point two volts DC. So this is still okay. Three hundred seventy millivolts DC. So this is the one that's already spent and cannot be used. If you want a dedicated AC voltage, just turn the selector one step up. Here's the AC voltage and it has an outer range of six volts all the way to one thousand volts with an accuracy of 0.9%, also with an input impedance of around 11 mega ohms. Notice also how the auto volt function on the left side of the selector lines up with the auto ampere current measurement on the right side. The AC voltage and frequency also lines up with the AC current and frequency on the other side. Maybe this is just nothing, but I like the aesthetic balance that they did here. It's a nice touch. Low Z. This is also the auto volt AC DC, but with a lower input impedance of 1 mega ohms, as opposed to around 11 mega ohms on the other voltage measurements. Low Z is supposed to eliminate the effect of ghost voltage or stray voltage from affecting correct voltage readings. I'm just curious as to why Hyoki chose 1 mega ohm instead of just a few hundred kilo ohms for its input for its input impedance. For instance, my Fluke 116 has an input impedance of just around 3 kilo ohms for its low Z function. This is the published specifications for the low input impedance voltage measurement with 1 mega ohm input impedance and a range of 600 volts. Diode and continuity test. The continuity buzzer is loud enough. There is no mistaking it. And the screen flashed red to warn us that the threshold for the continuity has been reached. 
This is the published threshold for continuity between 25 ohms and 245 ohms. Diode measurement has a threshold of between 0 0.15 volts and 1.8 and 1 .8 volts. This voltage range takes care of testing forward voltage of normal silicon diodes, which are typically rated at 0 0.4 volts to 0 0.7 volts. Point four to 0.48 volts, 1.688 volts. 0.53 volts and 0.157 volts. Resistor test function. A resistor test function has a published range between 600 ohms and 60 mega ohms with an accuracy of 0.7% to 1.5%. Nine point nine ohms, ninety nine ohms, four sixty three point one ohms. Notice, however, that the instrument makes a continuous uh, buzzing sound while it is uh, locking onto a reading. I'm not sure why Yoki uh, designed the uh, resistance measurement with uh, the buzzer very busy making beeps while uh, locking on to a reading. The sound of the buzzer can be silenced with a power-up option. Pressing filter while turning on the instrument will disable the buzzing sound. Let's try that now. Press filter. Beep off. Now you can measure resistance in silence. The consequence of that, however, is that the continuity buzzer is also silenced. This power-up option, or the uh, uh, disabling of the buzzing sound, is saved even if you turn off the instrument, just like the backlight, which you can also save. So the next time you turn on the instrument, the buzzer is still off. To return the buzzer to its default state, simply repeat the process of that power up option, press filter and turn on the instrument, beep on. And now the buzzer is restored to its default state. Capacitance test. The 4261 has an electrostatic test capacity between 1 microfarad and 10,000 microfarads or 10 millifarads. The published accuracy is between 1.9% and 5%. Four point ninety seven microfarad, one microfarad, one hundred nine point two microfarad. Next is the function for the optional current clamp accessory, which I don't have, so I'll skip this one. But just for reference, this is the model of the optional current clamp accessory. Uh, current. Clamp on probe model 9010-50, 98-50 98 or 9132-50. Next is the AC current and frequency. As previously noted, I cannot move the selector unless the test leads are first removed from the input terminals. And now the current terminal A is open 
together with the COM terminal while the V terminal is closed. Now for me, current measurements using a digital multimeter like this and using its test leads is even more hazardous than voltage measurement, unless you're just testing current flow from a 9 volt battery to a tiny light bulb. This is because you need to break the circuit to be measured and place the digital multimeter in series with the load. So be very careful. Be also warned that the current limit is only 10 amperes. That's the current limit, 10 amperes and protected with a 10 ampere fuse. But I apologize because I won't be able to demonstrate this AC current and frequency since I have no equipment with which to use this. But I will take the next function, the auto AC-DC current and test current flow using my DC power supply and a 12 volt LED lamp. This is my DC power supply and my 12 volt uh, LED lamp rated at 15 watts. First connecting the lamp directly across the power supply. I got a current of 0 0.404 uh, amperes or 404 milliamperes. Now I'm going to break the circuit and connect the digital multimeter in series with the load. Similar to this setup. It may not be apparent but it is actually now in series with the load. It's getting 437 milliamperes. So this demonstration shows that the current measurement function works. Although as I have said, uh, I apologize that I cannot demonstrate the AC current and frequency because I don't have equipment to uh, whose circuit I can break and measure current there. But the auto ampere uh, current measurement really does work. I'll just go over the functional buttons uh, quickly. The auto hold is engaged when you long press the hold button. This is useful when you want to automatically hold the measured value on the LCD screen without pressing the hold button. For example, when your two hands are holding a test lead. So you can remove the test leads afterwards and read the value on screen at your convenience. The mean, max, and peak button. It toggles those values based on the measured values over a period of time. The filter button is a passband filter. It will block off certain frequencies from affecting the measured values, and this can help in correctly reading AC voltage or current output of variable frequency drives. It has 100 Hz and 500 Hz filter to block off frequencies above those values. The zero ohms adjuster function is engaged when you long press the filter button while in the ohms position. This is a pair of new test leads, so the values here is already very low to begin with. The zero ohm adjuster should be useful for those older test probes or test leads which have high internal resistance like 1 ohms or 2 to 3 ohms. The range button. The range button toggles between manual and auto range. In most cases auto ranging is convenient but with manual range you have the option to keep your measured parameters on just a limited range if you wish which in some cases makes measurements faster. The backlight button toggles the backlight on or off, while the blue function button toggles between the main function and its option symbolized in the blue color. When the function and backlight buttons are pressed together while the selector is in the auto volt function, the high voltage DC measurement function is enabled. This is aimed for measurement in solar uh, power installations with the optional Hiyoki high voltage DC probe, which is an optional equipment and not part of the retail package.
Here are some of the things that I really liked about the Hyoki DT4261. I've discussed most of them above already, so I'll just summarize them here. Number one, wireless functionality. Excel Direct Input and Genet Cross. Number two, the L9300 test leads with uh, very innovative finger guards that does not get lost. Number three, battery cover locks that require no tools. Number four, it has a rugged body due to the IP54 environmental protection and drop proof rating. Number five, outstanding backlight control and power up options. Number six, three line LCD screen with red warning background light. Number seven, input terminals equipped with mechanical shutters. Number eight, accuracy and reliability associated with an electrical measuring device that's made in Japan. Number nine, speed of voltage measurements. And number 10, three year manufacturer's warranty. It's not easy to find things to dislike about the DT4261. So these are more along the lines of my personal preference really. Number one, the buzzer is a little too busy especially when using outer range in the ohms function. So some of us may not like that it continually beeps while uh, outer ranging until uh, the correct value is stabilized and displayed on the screen. You can turn it off, but then the continuity buzzer will also be silenced. I would have preferred the buzzer to be less busy or less noisy. Number two, the diode measurement function is limited to a threshold of between 0.15 volts and 1.8 volts only. This isn't a problem for me and I think it's good enough for testing ordinary silicone diodes, a lot of which are rated at 0.5 to 0.7 volts anyway. But if measurement of higher forward diode voltage is a top priority for you, then you may want to look at uh, something else. Number three, the speed at which the 4261 test capacitors and resistors may seem slow in comparison with other digital multimeters. However, the 4261 is fast enough for me, but some folks may take exception. What's important for me is that the 4261 provides a wide available range for electrostatic capacity 100 microfarad to 10,000 microfarads or 10 millifarads the maximum 60 mega ohm resistance range is no slouch either however sometimes the reading of the electrostatic capacity reverts to millifarad for example here 0 0.178 millifarad and it might cause confusion to some people you have to mentally Convert that to 178 microfarad. Remember that the symbol for microfarad is as displayed there on the screen, 23.3 .3 microfarad. It is different from a millifarad symbol. There the screen displays 0 0.498 millifarad. You have to mentally convert that to microfarad, which is 499 microfarad. So this may cause some inconvenience to some people. A carrying case together with the retail package would have been nice. The case for the 4261 is a separate purchase. Uh, it's a good thing that the L9300 test leads, however, are included in the retail package and I think that makes up for the luck of the carrying case, in my opinion. Overall, I think that the Hyoki DT4261 is a good true RMS digital multimeter. The unit itself, even without the wireless adapter, is already well equipped with innovative features and is easy to use. But it offers more than the usual digital multimeter. With its Bluetooth apps, it's possible to log data, record events, and make proper reports. There is a bit of a learning curve on its wireless apps, and there is initial cost to consider but when you weigh its potential for professional work, I think that one may find that the investment is worth it. I'd appreciate your comments and suggestions. Thank you for watching.